to get us going. And we appreciate you all joining us and sharing with the volunteers all of the details that they might need to know um, for the race. And just one other point of clarification, many of you are course marshals, many of you are other um, volunteer positions in the race. And so we will have um, an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end. And um, so, so feel free to keep those um, and uh, we'll have that opportunity at the end. And without further ado, Reed, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Good to see everyone. And uh, it looks like a, an amazing turnout this evening. So greatly appreciate your time and greatly appreciate your, your effort in advance uh, to Memorial Day weekend. Um, you know, Aaron, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, I know we have about 350 athletes coming from various countries, but uh, I never, I, I didn't see that final country count. We are at 39 countries participating with the 350 athletes, 200 staff supporting those country teams. And this is uh, the largest non-European paracycling World Cup ever. Thank you, Aaron. And, and so, you know, big kudos to the city of Huntsville, the community. Uh, you know, this is a ginormous effort. We have been producing paracycling now for a few years in Huntsville, and we've culminated into a international event, which is extremely exciting. Uh, personally, I, you know, Huntsville has been a tremendous city to work with, a uh, great community and super, super excited to, to share Huntsville with the world uh, that's coming uh, in a week. So you all should be very pleased and very excited. Uh, we've got fantastic race courses. Uh, in, in my personal opinion, not just because Sean and I put these courses together, uh, but we, we've got an amazing venue, a great place to race. Um, and something to, to know is that uh, these athletes uh, that are coming from all these countries, uh, this is the third World Cup, World Cup race in a row. So they were first in, uh, in, in, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, they first went to, was it Belgium first? No, no Italy, Maniago. Italy first, mm -hmm. then Belgium. Mm -hmm. and that was back to back. And they've had about a, what, two week break? That's correct. And then they're gonna come to us. So I know many of these athletes are super, super excited. Uh, I think the United States is, the USA team is represented with well over 40 athletes. So we're, we're definitely hoping to take home, take home some medals. Um, you know, one thing I, I encourage you all to participate in is I know there's a lot of shifts, a lot of long days. If you are participating in the morning or midday and have an opportunity to come back to the venue, uh, particularly the athlete village and watch the awards ceremony, uh, which will be at the Hudson Alpha location. If you're familiar with uh, Cummings Research Park, uh, that'll be right off of McMillian Way and Moquin. Um, I, I definitely encourage that. So we'll have uh, plenty of awards ceremonies, medal ceremonies uh, each day. Uh, and sometimes uh, on days we'll have multiple ceremonies. So uh, I know we have lots of different types of volunteer positions uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, I think what I want to say probably uh, for for last will be course marshals, which I think predominantly is the the eminent or the preeminent. Uh, volunteer position that most people have signed up for. Um, but I know we have, uh, and again, Aaron, please uh, correct me, but uh, we, we have hospitality, we have anti-doping, mm -hmm. horse marshal. Uh, what else did we, we provide signups for? We have a uh, food service, we have athlete village credential monitors, and we yep. have the team transportation facilitators across Moquin and floor. Very well. good, very good. And production. Hey, hey Aaron. Yes. You might want to advise folks to turn their cameras off. There are okay. some things going on that don't need to be on camera. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that note. If you will turn your cameras off and if you'll uh, be sure to turn your microphones off uh, unless you are speaking or have a question, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. 
And and please, uh, to, to the group, feel free to post your questions um, as we are, 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 are talking. Uh, happy to answer those on the fly and as we go. Uh, sometimes it's very good for a question to be answered so everyone can hear it uh, instead of saving it to the end. Um, you know, obviously we will we will have uh, hospitality as a volunteer position, and we have our hosp main hospitality at Start Finish, which is on Explore Boulevard, just south of Faro, just north of Moquin. So for most of you, hopefully you're familiar with uh, Cummings Research Park and kind of the layout there uh, near uh, Columbia High School. Uh, we've had this start finish uh, for, well, every year that we've been racing uh, at Cummings Research Park. And so the hospitality uh, will be on the uh, high school side, if you will, or the west side of the course. And obviously that position in that area is uh, going to be catering to our, our teams, our VIPs, our officials, uh, and so forth. So we, we greatly appreciate the hospitality folks that are going to be in there. Um, our start finishes is uh, unique in a lot of ways that, uh, you know, our staging for riders uh, for our, our TT day, uh, where those that are familiar with the races that have happened in the past, uh, our time trial ramp. So we'll do racing on starting Friday, uh, and uh, we'll do time trial on Friday as well as Saturday. And so individual time trial, uh, each rider will start on the ramp and go off the ramp. And basically, it's a race against the clock. So every rider is going against the clock uh, and trying to produce the fastest time based on their classification. Uh, and, you know, Aaron, I, I, I realized, too, that I, I probably should back up a little bit. And I know it's hard to we've got a lot of people on the call, but to to discern, you know, who's repeat, who's been to these races before and who hasn't. So perhaps I'll, I'll back up real quick and just explain that, uh, you know, our, our riders, we're, we're talking about paracyclists, and we have several different types of classifications. Uh, and when I say classic, excuse me, classifications, we're referring to individuals with particular types of impairments or disabilities. Um, we have riders that will be on upright bikes. So a standard bicycle that you and I might ride, you know, two arms, two legs, uh, but their impairment may still allow them to ride a two-wheeled bicycle, and they're classified accordingly. Uh, we will have also uh, paracyclists that will be uh, seated or kneeling, and they'll be considered a hand cyclist. They'll be running a crank arm in front of them, either kneeled or sitting. We'll have cyclists on a tricycle. And those are three-wheeled bikes, basically. Uh, and they'll be uh, out there on the course. What else am I forgetting, Sean? Um, I believe that's about it. We've got the H1, C1s. Yeah. We've got the T1s. So every athlete on Friday and Saturday will be starting off the time trial ramp. That time trial ramp used to be on Moquin, right in front of the high school, just off of Explore in past years. We've actually moved that ramp a little bit further we'll say up course, if you will. So if you're at Moquin and Explore at the high school, you'll take a ride on Explore and maybe move up about another, about another 400 meters. And we moved the ramp up that, to that location. A uh, big reason why we've done this is because Athlete Village, where all the teams will be staging, are located at Hudson Alpha. 
in their large parking lot. So we're just trying to create a little bit better flow pattern between the high school, Hudson Alpha, Athlete Village, and the start area. And I think we have a hand raised. Alvaro? Yeah, just a quick question. Is there any way to share a sort of map or overview of the area? So I'm new to Huntsville. I'm not very familiar with the area at all. And so it would help me a lot uh, since I'm a visual learner. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see if we can get a map going up here for you just momentarily. Um, maybe while I speak, I don't know if Aaron, I think you have the controls. If you could maybe mm -hmm. share a, uh, a site map, a venue map for us. Maybe we could, I think that's four or five pages long, but on a PDF, but I think we can go through that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, guys. A absolutely. Um, so again, on Friday and Saturday will be time trial days or individual time trial. On Friday, uh, we're going to begin to close the course, close the roads around uh, Cummings Research Park at 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to have a dedicated hard closure of those roads dedicated to riders at 2 p.m. We're going to be doing warm up between 2 and 2.50 p.m. At 3 p.m., we start racing on Friday. So 3 p.m. is go time. Let's see, Aaron's working out the, uh, the logistics there, but um, we're going to race until about 6, 6.30 in the evening on Friday and then have award ceremonies uh, post-racing at Hudson Alpha and parking lot there at our stage. On Saturday, we have an early, early start. Um, we will start to close roads at 6 a.m. And that gives Sean and I time to make sure that we're resetting, setting the course, fencing, banners, scrim, sandbags, all of that good stuff, make sure all law enforcement are in place, make sure that uh, all medical assets are in place. And then we go racing, or excuse me, we do warm up starting at 8 a.m. Uh, warm ups go till 8.50 a.m. And then we start racing at 9. There we go. Oh, oh okay. Almost. <laughs> Almost. There we go. There's a time trial course. Excellent. And I can swap back and forth, Reed. Thank you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, we can leave that up there for a moment. I can kind of go through that. So, Aaron, if you could maybe zoom a little bit more for me. There we go. And where you see, well, the finish line, it actually bumped that over to the finish line, the checkered flag. But where you see just south of that, the green arrow, that is our time trial ramp setup, and that's where we're going to start from this year. So uh, where you see just north and right of that, where you see the I or the information icon, that is Hudson Alpha. And so our riders have exactly a quarter mile to go to get to the start line from that location. Uh, we'll stage riders accordingly. The riders do have to go through a couple uh, prelim uh, checks, check on bike, check on themselves. They get to stage in line at that point, and then uh, they'll be released about every two minutes based on their wave starts. And then so our course goes basically in a, it'll start in a counterclockwise fashion. And so our riders will ride on Explorer Boulevard up to Mark C. Smith, left on Discovery, <clears throat> pardon me, a right back on Explorer, uh, right back on Discovery, left on Moquin. And then this very unique feature to the time trial, which is called the double helix on Genome Way on the Hudson Alpha property. It's very narrow, tight. Actually, it's a bit of an uphill section going up to the 180 turnaround and a downhill section. So it's very high speed coming out. They turn right back onto Moquin, right on Explore. We'll go past the finish line. 
and then ride out quite a ways to do a 180 degree turn and then go directly back to the finish. Is this map providing enough perspective for everyone that's not familiar with the area? Christopher, I think, and Robert, there's some questions. If, if I know you're raising hands, which is awesome, if you <laughs> can type your question in the, uh, in the message bar here, would also be super helpful. And keep in mind, yeah, and keep in mind, I was going to say, Reed, we'll, we'll, we've got, you've got a lot of detail to share. So I think yeah. some folks may, may have their questions answered as we go through, but certainly, um, understand. No worries, Christopher. Thank you. Robert, did you have a question? Uh, yes, roads are 100% closed. So your question is where I was told to park, how are we to exit? Um, Aaron, I, I don't yeah. know. Go ahead. You, you might want to jump in on this. Sure. So when you pick up your T-shirt and sign your volunteer waivers, you'll be shown where to park based on where your location of volunteering is. And uh, all of the parking locations are on the external part of Explore Boulevard. So you would park at that location and then you'll walk to your uh your assigned volunteer spot and then you'll walk back to your car to be able to exit and you know i might i might suggest to you for those that are course marshals that if there's a designated area that you're checking in at and uh you know you you might have to end up traveling quite a ways to your course marshal location <clears throat> uh, please feel free to bring your bike you know that that's completely uh, acceptable and we encourage that that well, you know if, if you're not looking to get your steps in for the day go ahead and bring your bike and you know you can throw it up on Strava hmm. uh, there's also a great link here that was provided uh, about uh, information about the event as well as linked to courses Reed, I, I can answer some of those questions if you want me to do that now. Um, or uh, so, Robert, I know you had asked about the location where you were. You are. I don't know what location, but um, if you're doing food service, uh, if you're doing athlete village credential monitors, if you're doing uh, team transportation facilitation, you're going to park at Columbia High School. So your entrance there is from Slaughter to um, uh, Pharaoh, and then into the rear part of the high school. If, um, and I know Robert, you just said you're in C28. Um, and so you're parking, if you're over near Radiance Technologies, you're right, where you're supposed to park would be Collins Aerospace on Jan Davis. Uh, so that is one of the locations where you can park and walk. You can park and walk at Auburn University, uh, park and walk at Intrepid and at Dynetics or Columbia High School. And those are the primary locations where all of our volunteers will park based on where they are volunteering. And we'll email out and additionally, um, the Friday of racing, that Friday morning, you'll get an email with the list of volunteer positions with your name on it and a map of that location. So you can see that as well. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just address to uh, Chris uh, Astel. Uh, double check your email. I sent you as a uh, as a sector captain. I sent you a pretty extensive email earlier in the week to all sector captains with that information about two way radios and parking and a map. And so there's quite a bit of information in that email. So double check that. But um, yes, you will get sector captains will receive two way radios. Um, you know, perhaps, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, jump right into, uh, anti-doping, uh, Aaron, if there's anybody mm -hmm. on here, uh, regarding, uh, that particular position, anti-doping, I'm, I'm currently working on uh, a little bit of an extensive email regarding anti-doping. Um, we recently, actually very, very recently just received a final, uh, testing schedule, if you will, uh, from USADA, uh, the, the organization that will be doing the testing uh, for anti-doping. 
And we are only going to be testing on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be testing specific categories at specific times. So for those of you that are uh, listed as anti-doping chaperones, I have your email. I have your name. Uh, look for an email tomorrow from me, which will have more detail. And uh, I, I've actually got to adjust the uh, shift times a little bit based on the categories that were chosen. Um, it should work with them within everybody's schedule. So I uh, appreciate your patience on that and understanding, but, uh, and certainly can hit me up with questions in regards to anti-doping once you receive that email. Um, you know, perhaps we, we dive into Aaron, uh, course marshals. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, course marshals, we, we have an extensive amount of you that have signed up for course marshals on every day which we're, we're very, very grateful for. Um, you are indeed our, our, you are extra eyes and ears. I mean, you are specifically Sean and I's link to what's happening out on course. Um, there will be an, uh, a person that we will introduce you to by email. Her name is Karen Laddie. Uh, she is our chief course marshal. Uh, she has been working with Sean and I for a very long time. <laughs> she knows uh, this side of the business very well. And so she'll basically set up a text group with you all, provide you with her number. I'll provide you with her number. And she'll check you in. She'll get you situated. She'll get you to her your position. Uh, she'll check in with you at your position. And basically, uh, she'll be your direct point of contact should anything go wrong on course. So maybe we we talk a little bit about well, what does that mean? What 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 means uh, for for something to go wrong? What are the issues that you should be looking for while you're out on on the race course? Um, and first, let me make a couple blanket statements by saying that uh, we. We want the course marshals specifically to pay attention to the general public that might be spectating and the athletes on course. So, I'll, and I'll kind of come back to those two different verticals and what that means, because uh, there's kind of a, there's different explanations there. Um, there will be quite a bit of law enforcement out on course. They're there to manage the traffic, light, traffic lights and intersections. They're there to make sure that that course is locked down, meaning that no public traffic vehicles specifically get on the, on the race course uh, in either direction, whether that means vehicles that would go directly head to head with racing competition or in the like direction of racing competition. So, in my experience so far with the city of Huntsville and HPD, that has never been an issue. They know their job. They do it very well. Uh, so please rely on them to, to do their job. Now, it can never hurt that if you're in a location that you've been assigned to, that an officer is also at that location. Please take a moment to introduce yourself and, and specify that you're here to help them and they're there to help you as well. So what that means is, let's talk about the public. Um, we want the public to spectate. We want the public to be course side. Uh, we want you know those eyeballs watching the race. We want them to enjoy it and be excited. We want them to cheer uh, the riders, uh, uh, you know, on uh, and have a great time. What we don't want is we don't want the the public to ride on the course on their personal bike. We don't want the public to walk on the course. Uh, crossing the course, let's talk about that one. Crossing the course is okay, but where is it okay? Specifically, it's okay at intersections where there is a course marshal, a police officer. That's kind of a natural spot for public to cross when it is okay to cross. So what does it mean 
to be okay to cross. Uh, on the time trial day versus the road race day, there's a difference. So on the time trial day, you know, our riders are going off every one to two minutes. And there's gaps between those individual riders. If there's a long enough gap that you can see or an officer can see to get people across the course, it's okay to do that. But if those riders are within vision and they're right there, we don't want to let those the, the public cross yet. We want to hold that public until it's safe to cross. The other thing that the public generally brings, which is just fine, it happens everywhere we go, is they bring the family pet, the family pet, whether that might be on a leash, off the leash. Oh, don't worry, Aaron. My dog's really well behaved. Trust me. I don't. I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I'm going to politely ask that you leash the, the dog or the cat or whatever it might be. Could be your horse, could be your donkey, it doesn't matter. Uh, we want to get that animal on a leash just in case. You know, the owner might know how they react when they see cyclists go by, but we don't. So we're just going to want to make sure that the public uh, keeps control of their pets and the pets aren't running loose uh, on the course as well. Um, road race day. So all those scenarios that I just explained, you know, on road race, road race day, it's a little different. Um, from the start line, typically what happens, uh, and I mean, I'm going to use some cycling technology, uh, cycling terminology that I'll try to explain um, what what I'm talking about, and, and many of you might already know these uh, the, the answers to these words, but. Um, when we start at the start line, the group starts off, that's the peloton or a large group of riders or cyclists. Uh, I'm going to guesstimate that initially from the start line, our groups or pelotons on road race days will we'll keep together initially. But as the race goes on, laps go on, inevitably, those pelotons will start to drop riders off the back, or there might be leads or breakaways of riders off the front. So now all of a sudden our footprint of that initial group expands. So on road race days, um, there's really a key factor here or two key factors to look for. Um, in typical professional cycling, uh, you know, whether it's men or women's racing, we see cars, motorcycles in the caravan, we see the Peloton, and then we see all team cars. And then we see some police after that. You're not going to see that ginormous caravan like you see on the Tour de France or in the Giro right now. You're not going to see that type of caravan on road race days. Um, we don't necessarily have that we are going to see more of motorcycles or motor officials out on course. You might see sprinkled in there are commissaires in, in uh, sedans or vehicles, uh, cars. So what we've got to look for is a lead motorcycle. That's when we shut things down. So if we're crossing public across the course, we see that lead motorcycle, Stop, stop the public. We don't want to cross any more traffic. You'll see the riders go by. You might see some official vehicles. And you want to look for that tail motor, that tail moto. That's your key, that that's the end of the caravan or the end of the peloton or the end of that group at that time. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you on this course, What's going to be difficult to kind of discern that in some scenarios is that we will be racing two different road races at one time. Just to add to the confusion. Why not, right? It's fun. So what the heck? Uh, so, you know, you might just have to be a quick study and learn very quickly that there's a group one and there's a group two on the road. 
Uh, I think the key factor is, is that Cummings Research Park has really good line of sight, meaning you can look down the course at the direction of which the race is coming at you from, and you can see a good distance in most places. So if you don't see anything coming, that is a great indicator that you probably have the time and space to get things to pass over the course perpendicular. So you can send things across the course. Hopefully I'm making sense so far. Any questions so far kind of on those scenarios? Good, all right, not losing anybody. I got some thumbs up there. Thank you, thanks, Chris. Um, you know, I think again, we're we're very, very fortunate in this uh, scenario or this this, you know, in the city of Huntsville to have Cummings Research Park. You know, typically we have so many more challenges and issues on road courses in particular. Uh, Sean can attest to this no matter where we go, uh, about closing roads and then just having all these ancillary or outside things that all of a sudden want to get close to the course or get across the course all of a sudden. And uh, so I don't think we're going to have a lot of those issues. Um, Jacob has a question. Uh, do course marshals have to check in before the shift? Aaron. Uh, so uh, if you have volunteered in the past two years, you, you may recall we had two kind of locations where you checked in before you went to your shift. This year, uh, we decided to not have that and have you all park at different locations that were closer to your position. So what you'll do um, is you'll know your position. There will also be little flags throughout the course with a, with a course number on it, blue flags. And so that'll help you find your position um, even easier. You'll go to your position and the sector captains will come around and which I know you'll talk a little bit more about Reed, but the sector captains will come in and touch base with you and they will communicate back to us if they're missing a course marshal in their sector. Yeah, so uh, that's, a, that's a great uh, a great picture we're charting, uh, starting to paint here is, is basically that, uh, you know, we, we definitely wanna pre-assign and ask all course marshals to go directly to the locations. Uh, sector captains basically are going to go to the high school park and then check in with Karen Laddie um, we are going to uh, check in those sector captains. You can either walk or ride your bike to then your assigned sector location. Um, we'll, we'll show you on a map where that sector location is and the parameters around that location, and we'll assign you a radio for the day. Um, those sector captains that do receive a radio, we ask that you just return that radio to where you picked it up from at the end of the day, even though you might be volunteering the next day. Uh, I just want time to be able to put that radio back on the charger, charge it up so it's ready to go for the next day. Uh, and I'll come back to radio communications for those sector captains uh, uh, just a little bit. I know Karen Laddie will, will give the full uh, download on on radio usage to those captains, but and and I know several are repeat, so they know how to use the radios. But um, I think the other side of the racing that we need to talk about for course marshals specifically is, uh, you know, at your location. Uh, you know, we're we're again dealing with a a group of athletes that are. Uh, are already challenged, already, you know, are, are phenomenal and already, you know, at the highest level of racing to be at a World Cup level. They're the top in their country and they're coming to race with us. Um, but it doesn't mean they may not, they might not have issues, whether it's at the start line or just after they start, or it's well into the course or well into the second, third, fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth lap that they might be doing of the course. Um, or it might be that they're in a road race and, you know, we've got some challenging corners on the course, believe it or not. And there's a crash, there's a touch of wheels, uh, and they go down or it's a time trial and they're going as fast as they possibly can. They overcook a corner and they smack the fence. Um, the first thing that I'm going to suggest to you all is that 
as hard as it might sound to do, and I know everyone really wants to help and, and you know, make sure that everyone on course, particularly the riders, are of good health and they're safe. And uh, if we need to administer help that we can, is actually to give them a moment. Uh, these riders are quite resilient. And I've, Sean and I, Aaron even, has seen them T-bone a fence at 30 miles an hour, tumble over in a sitting uh, hand cycle and push themselves back up with a bunch of road rash and then just start motoring again. And that's what we're kind of saying here is that give them a moment to right themselves, to assess themselves, to see if they do get back up and moving. Um, apologize if I have background noise, my kids are home, so. Uh, you know, another issue that might arise for a rider is they may have a mechanical, they may drop off the back or because of a crash, their chain's fallen off or their wheel might be broken. Um, you know, we're, we're not allowed to touch or administer help in that scenario. We have what's called neutral support on course. Uh, we have officials, motor officials that will assist in that scenario. So please don't rush out is what I'm trying to say um, from your post. Um, but if you do experience a scenario where a rider has crashed and they're slow to get up, they're not getting up, or you they're noticeably injured. Um, if you do not have a radio, that's when you take advantage of the text group that Karen Laddie has set up, or you text her number directly and saying, I need assistance. I have a rider down. The rider number is, we like to refer to our riders via their rider number. That tells us everything. It tells me who they are, what country they, they're from, how old they are. Tells me everything that I need to know, and that way I can relay it, relay that to the officials, um, and then maybe a brief, uh, you know, just a brief comment or two of what is going on, and we could administer, administer assistance. Um, we will have quite a bit of medical coverage out on course, so we'll have three, basically three crews, two-person crews. Uh, they're called, they're labeled as ALS crews. They're advanced life save, advanced life saving crews uh, in gators or on gators on course. They had defib units. They have all the other supplies that they need uh, to administer assistance and they'll be strategically placed on course. Uh, we will have a dedicated, actually, excuse me, two dedicated ALS, EMS units, ambulances, if you will, <clears throat> uh, dedicated one in Athlete Village and then one at Start Finish Line. We'll also have two med tents that'll be fully staffed, one at Athlete Village, <clears throat> pardon me, and one at uh, Start Finish. So you can always, if you do not have a radio, if you're not one of those sector captains, you simply text that to Karen that you need help. Now, if it is a drastic, something that you just absolutely feel, whether you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter, that needs immediate medical attention, I, I, I want nothing more for you all to do than to dial 911. Just do it, just dial 911. That is the right move, period. Uh, we will hear about it. We're monitoring 911 channel. We've, we've got uh, the county involved. They're listening in. Uh, Hemsey, we've got Huntsville, uh, Huntsville Medical on board. We have a chief uh, medical officer. So we're, you know, we're, we're hopefully in tune enough that we'll be able to catch everything in time. Uh, but if there's something serious that you feel is serious enough to dial 911, just go ahead and dial 911 and we'll take care of it. Um, I had another thought about medical, but, uh, oh, sector captains, apologies. Uh, we will brief you on radio usage. There are multiple channels <clears throat> on, um, on the radio. 
we'll have a specific channel that sector captains will be using, not only listening, but able to, to talk on and use. And that's the time that you call uh, for a sector captain. If you're aware of a medical or an issue that you call out on that channel, <clears throat> what that issue is, and then we will we will uh, basically uh, work with that issue accordingly, and then work with you to determine what needs to be done. I, I know we have a couple of hands ra hand raised, uh, Robert or Ravina, Ravina. I'm, I'm hopefully I have that pronounced correctly. Questions. No, I think we're good. Okay. Like, let's see. Ah, there's a good one. <laughs> weather delays. Mm -hmm. So weather delays, we are a rain or shine event. The show must go on, as they say. Um, however, between Sean and I and, and other individuals, we are monitoring the weather. Um, we do take in consideration and obviously we'll, we'll make the appropriate call. Um, <clears throat> one of the key items or key weather issues that causes us to, uh, even though it might be raining, is, is thunder lightning. In the lightning, <clears throat> apologies, is, is definitely a, a showstopper. Uh, if we start to get lightning in the vicinity or on top of our course, uh, we will begin to shut down racing and start to make the announcements uh, through all of our channels, whether it's radio, text message, um, venue, stage, uh, PSA, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, it, it. You know, high wind is also a consideration, but it has to be usually pretty high wind. Uh, these athletes again are pretty resilient, and they're used to uh, to racing in all sorts of weather. Mm -hmm. uh, Reed, I can take this next one. Um, we um, you so for your shirts and your waivers, they your waivers have to be signed before your shift. Um, on your shirts, um, you have to wear your shirt for your shift. Uh, that's one of the ways that the the commissaires and the race staff and and police and others know that you're uh, you're supposed to be where where you are as a as a marshal or as a volunteer um and um so we ask you to pick those up beforehand um we will i think the last pickup that we have currently scheduled is monday after our in-person orientation However, um, we will put out some additional information after that time for those that haven't picked up their shirts about um, either ways in which you can go to the Westin and with expanded hours that somebody will be there um, and uh, really early and, and much later. And or um, if you haven't picked it up by your shift, we will have those at Columbia High School. So you would have to come through there in order to get your shift and change and, and sign your waivers at that point. But we'll put out all that information next week. Thank you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And I know we have a, a question a little bit more about anti-doping. Happy to jump into that. Um, and if there's any more questions that come up about course marshaling, please don't hesitate to drop it in comments. Um, but anti-doping, uh, again, we'll be testing, <coughs> apologies, uh, specifically on Saturday and Sunday. Those are the only two days that we're, we're anticipating testing. Um, the the anti-doping area if you will where the testing actually takes place is inside the hudson alpha building but the way this kind of works is is that basically we'll have all anti-doping volunteers meet uh the dco it's david charlie um oxford so that's dco that's doping control officer uh her name is laura han uh, We'll have you park and walk over to Hudson Alpha Athlete Village and meet Laura. You'll go through a, a semi-brief 30 to 40 minute training session of, of just the basics. Um, and then you'll be assigned a vest, a clipboard and instructions. So what we're doing here is we're testing specific 
riders. I'm not going to, I can't say it's not Sean Thurman or Aaron uh, as a specific rider. It's, for example, it's a, it's a class and then it's the winner of that class or classification or that race of that day in that classification. Um, the way we do it is that the chaperone will be assigned to that rider. You'll attempt to capture and meet that rider at the finish line. So when they come across the finish line, deviation, and look for that rider number and that rider name and that country and try to find that rider. <clears throat> um, if that rider is not found at the start finish or deviation point or regathering point <clears throat> after deviation, you then go to athlete village and look for that rider. You talk to their team, there's team tents. We will be providing to uh, chaperones a site map where all these team tents are located and they are all labeled. It'll be very obvious where Italy is versus USA versus Great Britain uh, versus Brazil and so forth. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so you find that rider. And then from that point on, that rider is under your purview. So you, you've got to basically follow that rider. If they need to go change, you go with that rider. If they need to do something else, you go with that rider. But what you're trying to do is you need to wrangle that rider back into Hudson Alpha and anti-doping. Takes a little bit of time, uh, you know, just to be aware that, you know, obviously our athletes are, are, are challenged, impaired. And so it takes them a little time to get out of their machine, out of, off their bike, out of their bike per se. And then in, you know, into, potentially crutches, prosthetic, or whatever it might be, uh, then to follow you to anti-doping. You escort them to anti-doping. You check them in. And then you make sure that they get into the men's or women's room accordingly. They do their job by, pardon me, but peeing in the cup. That's exactly what they're doing. And then that sample is then returned to the DCO and then it's tested right there on the spot. So hopefully that was a, a bit of a description. Again, I'll be sending out more information for anti-doping volunteers uh, on specific times uh, that we're, we're looking to adjust shift times to, to accommodate for the races uh, and individuals that we're testing. I think I have a question here. Are there any transgender athletes we should be mindful of at the race? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Aaron, you're on mute. No worries. <laughs> you think we'd, we'd have learned that by now. Um, if if there are spectators in terms of on the sides, if uh, can you talk a little bit about where they're allowed to sit? Uh, you know, some people tend to think that much like running races, you can sit on the curb or well, uh, those kind of areas. Yeah, ab absolutely. So you know, again, we're 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 absolutely blessed with a you know wide and and ample uh, raceway and and course for either you know time trial day or road race day. <clears throat> um, you know. We're, we're fine if they're up on the curb, uh, just as long as they don't take that step into the roadway. You know, we, we don't have fencing. We only have, uh, we, we're not fencing nine, 10 miles of course. It's just not possible. We, and we don't need to do that. We're, we're fencing major turns. Uh, we're fencing our chicane area. We're fencing uh, hairpins. Um, so the curb is fine. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, you know, I've seen people set up uh, pop-up tents, umbrellas, chairs, and just spectate for for the day, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we are not looking for them to do is what we don't want them to do 
is to get too close to the athletes and what can happen. And this is whether we have fencing at a race course or not for any of you that are cyclists or enjoy watching like the Giro or the tour. How many times have we seen the Yahoo who's leaned over with the camera over the fence or a musette or whatever it might be and actually come in contact with a rider? That's what we don't want. So, you know, again, if you feel it's a situation where we see the public encroaching on that space where we feel it might be an issue, please feel free politely. Again, you are all representatives of the UCI, Huntsville, and this Paracycling World Cup. You're a direct, a direct reflection, whether it's the public or the riders, you're a representative. So just use your best manners. Um, if you do experience the public that are unruly, don't want to listen, <clears throat> that's when you call local law enforcement that's nearby or you call Karen uh, or, or a sector captain, and then we will administer the appropriate response uh, with uh, law enforcement or key staff, Sean, myself, or some of our designated staff. Reen, I'm sure there'll be other questions coming in about course marshals, um, you know, throughout. You might want to touch on a few of the other positions. For instance, uh, we've got Athlete Village Credential Monitors. A little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, so, and I apologize, Aaron, you may actually learn more, more, <laughs> okay. more, than, more than I do on this area. But so I think that the, the key things that I can definitely touch upon are uh, the Athlete Village is for the athletes. There's a solid line in the sand on this one, guys. Um, uh, my colleague, Sean's colleague, he's a, he's, he's, he's a direct staffer. Uh, his name is Preston. Uh, he will be in charge of Athlete Village. Then we have a, a very nice um, and capable couple that have worked a lot of events with us. Um, uh, Larry and Pauline that will be assisting Preston, but that athlete village is fenced and closed off to the public. It is for athletes only and, and their team members. Um, and the reason we do that, uh, we're, we're still in a, in a, uh, you know, kind of a day and an age of, of protection for these athletes at these international events. And, um, while you know COVID is not a situation, and and we we've already put on two major events in Huntsville with COVID as a situation or a variable, um, where everything was on lockdown, um, we still had racing. Um, you know, it's it's really kind of that mentality that uh, it's it's only credentialed individuals, including athletes, that are allowed inside that footprint. Um, you may spectate from the outside. And we actually have built a public friendly location, which is the awards area for that purpose. So that, that's right. So, so when you um, arrive and check in with Preston or Larry or Pauline up in the athlete village, they'll have a, a cheat sheet of the different credentials and they're all colored. They're varying the color. Uh, determines the type of access they they have, um, so sporting versus media versus VIP, et cetera, and they are a different color. And so they'll they'll tell you what colors are allowed through this this main entrance into that um, athlete village tented area where the teams are. Um, and uh, so they'll walk you through that once you once you arrive. It's it's pretty straightforward. Um, Reed, there was a question about registration and food service volunteers. I'm happy to take that. Um, and then I'll let you do team transportation facilitation in terms of that pathway um, and, and support for those team cars getting in and out. Um, on registration, I think you might mean hospitality. Um, and a hospitality is up at the start finish line. There's a check in tent um, and that's right outside the hospitality tent. And we'll have a list of individuals and wristbands. Um, for you to check off. And those are the people that are allowed to come in the hospitality tent, typically sponsors, community partners, um, and others that are allowed to come in. 
um, those with a certain type of credential as well, and they'll get a wristband and you'll just check them off. It's, it's pretty straightforward okay. and you get a great spot to watch the start and finish of the races. Um, that is at Columbia High School. That, that check-in area is just um, east of Columbia High School where the start finishes, so that's where you would park. For food service volunteers, this is something we've not done in previous Huntsville races, and it's really um, an amazing opportunity, I think, uh, for our athletes. As, as many of you may know, Cummings Research Park is, um, particularly the west side, is, is relatively isolated from, from having kind of food service inside, internal to the park. And so um, we, um, inside Athlete Village, there is a food hall for athletes and teams. These teams have um, arranged in advance and paid for in advance meals for their teams. Um, uh, dietitians worked on the menu. So um, you'll be uh, serving the athletes. A little bit of that might be kind of prep or going and running and getting the food that's, that's coming off the grill behind you and bringing it over. Um, and then um, the nutrition elements are all pretty separate to account for any dietary or allergen issues. Um, we'll have a sheet of what the menu is. We'll have a sheet of what the, the dietary instructions are. There'll be a sign <clears throat> on the outside of the tent in terms of um, what the menu is for that particular meal. And each meal will have its own color-coded ticket with a date stamp, and that'll also be on the sign outside. And um, so you'll walk them through that um, and, and, and assist them with getting their, their lunch. We'll have somebody who, when you arrive, will kind of walk you through that as well. Um, but it's a great way to interact with the athletes, um, you know, with a, with a smile and some of the Southern hospitality that we're known for, um, in Huntsville. And, uh, this will be a shaded tenant, tenant area for them, uh, to get, uh, lunch and dinner. And then on the weekend, it'll be breakfast, lunch, and dinner will be what we're serving. So lunch and dinner starting Wednesday, May 24th. Um, and then our final meal will be lunch on May 29th. And for those in food service, the best place to park is going to be Columbia High School and then just walk the, the short kind of quarter mile up to the Athlete Village. Um, and there'll be uh, signage with maps up there and that'll show you where the food hall is, which is, um, if I remember correctly, in all the moves, I believe it's behind the team tents. And um, Reed, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, the team transportation facilitators and the way that will work, uh, just enough for folks to get an idea that might be on the call. And, and I apologize, Aaron. Are you talking from from the high school over to Athlete Village, or? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We've got we've got some paid parking services, and then we also will have volunteers. Great. Um, so. And Sean Thurman, please feel free to jump in here. But um, the way this is going to work, and 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 because we're, you know, if you you saw the map, we've got this circular race course, and then we stuck Athlete Village in the middle. While it's not ideal in a lot of ways, it's ideal in in other ways. But so it provided a, a unique logistic uh, challenge for us is that. You know, we need to continually move teams in and out. We we have designated um, bulk load in times. And then throughout the day while we're racing, we have limited times. But, you know, in our experiences, and, and Sean and I have done uh, world championships, we've done World Cup events, uh, at various UCI levels, but we're, 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 we're constantly having to move people. It's just, it's just the way things work and teams always are on the move. Um, so essentially the back entrance of Faro, or excuse me, the back entrance of the high school off of Faro is, is the gateway. That's what we're telling all the teams that they need to come in that direction, but come around the back side of the high school and come uh, to the front side via Moquin. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, that's you know essentially our, our second checkpoint. The first checkpoint is out at uh, Faro and the high school entrance. 
and we've we've developed these checkpoints uh, for specifically teams. Uh, teams will be designated um, very clearly in two different fashions. Um, they will have a specific sticker or decal, or if you're Canadian, we call them decals. Uh, I'm not Canadian, but lots of events in Canada, so um, I like the word decal. Uh, we put those across the front windscreen or windshield at the top. It has the UCI and city logo. It has the word team in black with the background of yellow and then a, an associated um, logo, which is the UCI logo. Additionally, team vehicles will have in the uh, upper right-hand side of the windscreen, if you're looking at the vehicle, a small T or T uh, means team sticker, decal, decal. Um, and, and that really is the, the badging that we're looking for. Those are the only vehicles other than uh, officials uh, or organizational vehicles uh, or staff vehicles that get past those checkpoints. Uh, so it'll be a combination of volunteer positions, um, key staff of Sean and I, we're the tech team, we're the technical team, um, specifically uh, Les Pickett and Dave Laddie uh, will be involved. Uh, as well as uh, a hired parking slash security company that's going to be giving us uh, three or four people each day to kind of help beef up that that staffing um, at those specific checkpoints. Does that help, Aaron? I think uh, that's great. Um, and. Um... Aaron, I think you froze. Um, I, I, I see a question here from Chris about food and, you know, certainly, you know, if there are specific, specific food or items that you need, come dress for the weather. Um, if you're a course marshal, bring a chair, bring a stool, something to sit on, that's fine. Bring an umbrella if it's, you know, gonna be bad weather um, or sunshine and you don't want to, to get the sun um sunscreen but we certainly will float around provide lunches as needed um water as needed uh i'm sorry aaron is tech oh aaron's back sorry about that uh but you know chris's question that just dropped in the comments was about food and yes. you know i kind of expanded on that as far as what to bring mm -hmm. And this really goes for all volunteers. You know, we're we're outside all day, guys. And so, you know, come come dressed and and kind of plan ahead for what you need. If you need medication throughout the day or your shift, bring that, please. Um, and by the way, our our medical um, uh, assets uh, are are there for the public and all the volunteers. So, you know, should you need something or the public needs something please don't hesitate. And I'll also say for the sector captains, they're there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So uh, we will feed you lunch. And then if your shift is over uh, lunchtime, like our, our middle of the day shifts, shift two is, um, is, is over a complete lunchtime. You wouldn't be able to have lunch beforehand or after. We will also have lunch as well. Um, and then snacks and drinks will come to the other shifts too. So um, so do pack your own, but we also will will take a little little care of you, a little love there um, throughout your shift. Great. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? Or read if you've got additional information you'd like to share while we see if folks have any questions. No, I, I think we, I think we perhaps covered everything. Again, it's uh, you know, again, your representatives of the event. Um, 
you're there for various reasons, but, you know, I, I want you all to be safe. I want you all to be comfortable in what we're doing. You know, I'm looking at the weather and Sean and I are, are we stock the weather every day. Um, who knows what we're going to get? I, so for those of you that are on the call, I mean, I, I, I live not far from you. I'm in Atlanta. I'm, I, I live north of the city. So I'm, I'm literally three hours away, almost equidistant, if you will, you know, um, laterally from you all. Uh, so, you know, weather wise, it's, it's a concern, um, always a concern, but, you know, we're very tolerant of the weather. So, you know, our plan from a race perspective is to race. Um, it's really got to be pretty extreme situation for us not to have uh, the racing going on. Uh, I think Gina asked about uh, bathrooms. I think we have plans to sprinkle porta potties yeah. as we've done in the past throughout the course. Um, you know, that's a great question because that's a great opportunity for you to text Karen or your sector captain. Hey, I need a, a natural is what we call it in the cycling world. Hey, I need a break. And uh, you go take your natural and then that sector captain will, will kind of, you know, run shotgun for you and cover your spot. Um, and then Ravina, I see you have your hand raised. Let me um, just answer this one other question. So you will um, get your course location assignment and the map um, first when you check in to get your shirt and you sign your waivers. That's where you will see it for the first time. We encourage you to take a picture of the map. Um, and then on Friday morning, Friday, May 26th, is when um, we will send out a, um, an email with a link to the maps and the course assignment listing that will be on the website under volunteer. And so uh, you'll be able to look at that at any time, um, including pulling that up as you're walking to, to your spot if you need to. Um, but that's our, our plan for that. Uh, Ravina, you had a question. If you want to unmute or type your question in the chat. Yeah, I went to pick up my shirt today, but I wasn't given any other information on like timing or uh, where I'm going to park or, you know, uh, or of where that uh, I'm in uh, hospitality. Okay, so if you're in hospitality, you will um, park at Columbia High School. Um, Columbia High School, you can get into Columbia High School from Faro Road off of Slaughter Road. Okay. And um, and then you, once you've parked, you will walk towards Explore Boulevard from the front of Columbia High School, and you'll see the start finish. You won't be able to miss it. Very large truss over the road. Mm -hmm. very bright colors and the hospitality tent will be there and that's where you'll check in okay so it's Faro road uh, that i'm going yes go to Faro road and you'll enter columbia high school at the back okay, okay. thank you you're welcome okay and what are the timings i wasn't given timings uh so when you signed up for your your shift you signed up for a particular time so i would encourage you to go back to your sign up genius and look at the time that your shift was and we encourage everyone to um arrive 30 minutes early i know sector captains are different um and anti-doping will likely be different but for all the other positions arrive 30 minutes before your designated shift time so that uh, you have time to get to your location um as well um and, and so, Ravina, I would just encourage you to go back to your Sign Up Genius uh, confirmation email to look at the time that you signed up um, for that position. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Food service and hospitality are different. Hospitality is, is related to the VIP hospitality tent at start finish. And food service is in the Athlete Village Food Hall. Okay. Gotcha. Other questions that we have? I know appreciate you all giving us this much time so we can go through. Kelly? This is... Sorry, I see Kelly Dean raising her oh. hand. Hey, Kelly. Kelly, you're on mute. Or 
or you're welcome to, to type it in, Kelly, uh, if you're having technical difficulties. Um, we'll keep an eye out for that. But we have, you know, this is this is certainly more days of racing than we've had the previous years. And uh, we have um, more than 400 volunteers over the over the course of the week. So it's um, we appreciate all of you jumping in. It was a lot to cover. Um, uh, because of all the positions and and uh, all of the different moving parts with this being World Cup and, and larger athlete numbers than we've had in Huntsville. And we just can't thank you enough. Um, you all have my email uh, as part of your sign-up genius confirmation. When you signed up, you have my email. Feel free to shoot questions over to us. Uh, you, uh, if you haven't picked up your shirt and your waiver, uh, you, you know, please do so. And we'll walk you through that um, as well. Again, for those that may not have heard, we appreciate your patience as we've had a one of our volunteer uh, staff people uh, is out sick. And so we've had to step in and and um, and help to communicate and um, and fill some slots. So thank you for your patience. We look forward to seeing you on the race course. Um, and um, and if you have questions, feel free to email those. I think we'll hang out for just a couple more minutes in case there are additional questions. I, I think Kelly Jean has a question. <laughs> <Aha>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm back on. I got it. Yeah, I know. Um, what, <laughs> what I was wondering is um, I will be working on Sunday. And um, what if we're there and our shift ends like at four o'clock um, and there's additional need that someone hasn't shown up? Can we hop to another spot for an hour or stay where, where we are? Or if we want to come on Monday, is that an option too? If so, who do we go to and say, hey, you know, is do you have an empty spot and you have a need? Uh, well, thanks for that question. <laughs> we, we love that kind of question. Um, you know, most most spots are designed to have someone come in after the shift. Um, in the case of a 4 p.m., we probably that it's it's a little bit of an overlap of a, a shift, and um, and so um, you know, I would say touch base with your sector captain because they're probably going to know. Karen Laddie will know who if you're a course marshal, um, if you're hospitality or food village, I would just check in with the the person there um, or. Um, the other option is uh, is to be able to to ask and someone can radio myself or we'll give you a list of who who will know that um, on our on our staff. Uh, uh, both myself and Megan Chambliss um, will have the information in terms of all of our volunteers and shifts. And, and so I think collectively the, the staff that you'll see um, will likely know. OK, yeah. Um, and Dora, um, I will, I would have to go back and look and see where you are. So I will make a note to go look on Saturday for, for Dora. Um, and I can email you or call you based on the information we have in our system. Um, and then you should have received an email to pick up your shirt and waiver. And that's where we can also cover on that information. Okay, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes in case some people have questions. Um, if you don't, you're welcome to drop off and keep an eye out for um, emails coming out from, um, you know, one of our staff members over the next week and, and such. And thank you all so much. Thank you.